All right, so this is my 2016 R1200 GS Adventure. Now, I traded in my old Triumph Explorer for this bike. If you want to know the reasons why I got rid of the Explorer and the bikes that I test rode before finally making a decision on this, I'll leave the link for that video down below. So, if you're in the market for this bike, but you haven't had a chance to have a proper close-up look of one, the first thing we're going to do is just do a little tour of the bike, a little walk around. I'll show you the switch gear layout, the dash layout, all that sort of stuff. And then we're going to talk about ergonomics, how it fits me being six foot three with a 34 in inch inside leg. Then we're going to talk about things like handling, how it filters through traffic, because I ride this thing in and out of London every single day. So we're going to do that. And if I haven't answered any of your questions in this video, then please feel free to send me a question in the comment section and I'll answer it as best I can. Okay. Right, lovely, let's get started. Woo, did it in one take. <laughs> got it up on the center stand now so you can have a proper good look around so this is a completely bog standard 2016 GS no aftermarket uh, performance modifications on it completely bog standard the things that I've added on are radiator guards grip puppies uh, bar bag the quad lock anti-vibration mount tank pads uh, sorry, knee pads, tank pads, just to break up the white and the silver, and I love the look of that. Um, Touratech rack, so it attaches to the existing BMW rack, so it's longer and it's wider. So I can fit a, tw a 120 litre bag on the back there and just carry all my camping gear, no problem at all. So that's everything I've added on. So starting from the front, lovely, really, really love this headlight. Not only how effective it is, but just the sort of overall design, I just love the look of it. There's your running light there, that sort of U shape which goes along the side. And then when you go into a sort of low light area, your dip beam will come on automatically. You don't have to do anything, which is really, really handy. The lovely low slung boxer twin engine, which helps with the handling, nice low center of gravity. Very, very comfortable pegs. Look how wide they are, really nice and wide. So this aids with, if you're doing off-road, it's just a lot easier to apply the brake when you've got a bit more a bit more height on it. That comes standard on GS. Bog standard exhaust, which I love the look of. Really, really nice. And it's got the two separate sort of outlets at the back there. You've got your electronic suspension, uh, single-sided swing arm. The only thing I don't like about this is the upright valve. I, I, I'd much prefer a 90 degree one just because just it's easier to get to. So I will be changing those. Mud flap at the back there. Oh, and also I forgot to mention there's another bag under there. I'm going to tell you why there's a bag on the front and a bag on the back a little bit later. Shaft drive, lovely and smooth, really, really nice. Again, this side, nice wide foot pegs. Uh, adjustable gear change, you can go up or down on that. And that's it. Oh, these are the BMW's own spotlights. Very good. And that's the sort of overall look of it. It's a really, really good looking bike. I mean, there's no getting away from the fact that this is a huge, huge motorcycle and the tank pretty much dominates the whole kind of view. Um, but it's, it rides, it's so easy to ride. It really is easy to ride. So let's have a little look at the switch gear. We have at the front there, your high beam and your flashers. You have uh, cruise control, which you just activate by doing that and then going faster or slower. You have hazards, your lights, trip and info, ABS and suspension settings, indicators. Now, thankfully, BMW have gone with the single switch indicator. Back on my GS I had years ago, they had the flappy paddle indicator for left and that side and right for that side it's just a very weird setup horn this scroll wheel which i wish they would have on that side as opposed to this side is for navigating your gps which i don't have so that's kind of um, serves no purpose for me spotlights and on this side you have heated grips your rider mode your kill switch and your start switch 
and this is the dash so let's start it up obviously keyless ignition and you can obviously have on here whatever information you want so I have range but you can have for example by hitting this button here uh, you're going to your setup your odometer trip one trip two your range until empty and on the bottom one which you access via the info button uh, external temperature engine temperature uh, average uh, miles per gallon uh, average speed that is your tire pressure sensor which only comes up in bar it doesn't come up in psi you have to change that at the dealership which is really annoying but there you go that's a, that's a, that will go on the not like list at the end um, oil level very handy to have obviously that only comes up when you're moving um, your date and back to the external temperature so I, I have mine always set up as external temperature and what do I have it set up on oh range to empty that's my that's my standard setup right there so the different modes you have you access via the mode button here so at the moment I'm on road you have um, dynamic enduro enduro pro rain mode and then back to road and then you can change your suspension settings via this one here and you can go to soft suspension if you hold it down it changes from uh, passenger with luggage uh, two passengers and then back to a solo passenger so you can have it on soft normal or hard and you really can tell the difference it's quite amazing but I'm going to talk about all the sort of rider aids and the electronics a little bit later on and to switch it off press that and to put on the steering lock you just hold it down and you hear it click and now that's locked into place so there you go there's a general sort of look over the whole bike and um, I think you'll agree it's quite a good looking machine it's really I, I think it um, I think it divides opinion on its looks but for me personally I love it and it is there's no getting away from the fact that it is a huge huge machine and like from the riders I view the tank pretty much dominates the whole look and obviously the uh, the lovely box of engines sticking out the side there but there you go okay let's talk about ergonomics oh. <laughs> don't bang your knee on it oh my god okay so a quick recap six foot three 34 inch inside leg let's see what it's like to get off the side stand no hands feels pretty light considering the actual weight of the bike uh, handlebars just over shoulder width apart for me leg room loads of leg room gear lever is easy to get to there's no stretch you can of course like I said adjust that same with the brake lever no problem at all this seat is a tad too hard I wouldn't mind it a little bit softer but again it doesn't it's, I'm just nitpicking you can tour days on end on this thing no problem at all talking of the seat this was actually in the high position when I bought it and I felt I was a bit too sort of perched on top of the bike so I put it in the low position and now I feel like I'm more a bit more in the bike but cocooned by the screen a bit more uh, feet on the f flat on the floor you know no problem there the only downside to these cylinder heads is the crash bar sometimes when you put the side stand down you can crack your shin of the crash bar but I'm slowly getting used to that so all in all extremely roomy extremely comfortable everything's within easy reach all in all a very 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 comfortable bike indeed before we set off for a ride let's have a good listen to this exhaust remember it's a bog standard exhaust I'll start it up now
Yes, that's not a bad sounding exhaust. It's quite sort of um, agricultural or slightly Germanic, dare I say it. And it's, um, it doesn't have the character of the old triple. It doesn't have that pop when you come off the throttle, but it's not bad. It's quite subdued and I don't mind that at all really. My, the days of loud, loud exhausts are, are long behind me. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The only, the only other exhaust I would go for if, if I was gonna get an aftermarket one would be that uh, lovely Acropovic one, which kind of tapers off at the end. Uh, yeah, I really like that, but as it is, I am happy. All right, all aboard the QE2. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Ugh. Okay, we're good, we're good. That gap is actually 48 foot wide. So let's talk about the actual proper meat and potatoes of this bike. What's it like to actually ride? What's the fueling like? What's the gear changes like? What's the handling like? One thing that it's really, really good at is low speed riding. It feels incredibly stable and well balanced and kind of poised. What am I doing behind this car? I keep doing that. I'm on a motorcycle. Get in the front, Billy. Yeah, it pulls away smoothly. There's no sort of lurching in um, when you're in first in low in uh, low revs. Very very buttery smooth. Just a few vibes through the handlebars, even less so now that I've got the uh, grip puppies on it. Really, really smooth. One thing that I did notice um, is when you go from first into second, sometimes it will go into neutral. So from first, you have to give it more of a kind of kick into second uh, than you would normally throughout the other gears, but you know, that's fine. So we're in first now. Give it a nice kick into second. The gear changes are lovely. Um, <clears throat> very, there's a very small movement on the gear lever. I found and when it when you do change gear it's a very it's a very it's, it's almost like a click it's a it's a very definitive um, sort of movement to change gears it's really really nice there's no clunking or you know sounds like you're kind of stirring a bucket full of spanners it's got a really lovely feel to it So fueling, excellent, gear changes are good, apart from the occasional first into neutral instead of first into second, but that's that's quite rare. It's quite funny when you when you when you go into um where are you going mate? <laughs> when you uh when you go from first into neutral but you think you're in second and you rev it and the bike doesn't go anywhere. It's actually quite funny, you just kind of <laughs> frantically searching for second gear. But it's all good. It's all good. And like I said, uh, with the old Explorer, when you come off the throttle like sort of like that, you would get all these lovely pops and but you don't get that with this bike. It's very it's very refined. You can really tell the years of uh, constant refinement with this bike they've really kind of honed it down and down and down lovely smooth let's give it a bit of welly Woo! 
Ooh, yeah, this thing flies. It really does. Well, let's have a chat about the brakes. The front brakes are absolutely superb. Crisp, nice, tight sort of feel on the lever. They have a really kind of um, defined bite to them, if you know what I mean. No sponginess, but also um, uh, something to note is there is braided hoses all over this bike. So for the clutch, there's a braided hose. For the front brake, there's braided hose in, and I presume I presume for the rear brake as well, but I can't actually see from here. But yeah, the front brake is just delightful. Back is, uh, is good, it's a little bit more spongy, but to be honest, I think that's the same for most rear brakes com in comparison to a, a front brake. Because there's one less disc, of course, so it's less stopping power. But yeah, all in all, brakes are superb. Superb. Wow, look at this big Rolls Royce in front of us here. La di da. One thing I will um, say about the switch gear, the indicator specifically, is it doesn't even feel like a switch, it's more like a button, and it's um, sometimes you have to double check to tell if you've actually turned them on or not. Um, there's like hardly any movement in it at all and the odd thing is it doesn't tell you whether you're going left or right it just tells you that your indicators are on because both arrows flash at the same time I can't remember if the old Explorer did that or not I'm not too sure but uh, yeah I find that uh, that's quite quirky look who it is everybody world of hat Woo! best hat shop in the world now on roads like this I'm very grateful for the um, the power of this headlight because the amount of near misses I've had on this road with pedestrians just walking out but they're coming out from everywhere look they're just everywhere and there's cars turning turning into the lanes turning out from them Moped riders, like they're not even stopping. Car doors opening up. I've had it all on this on this road, so um, I always put the spotlights on. And um, uh, like I say, the headlight on this um, on this bike is absolutely superb. It's like a lighthouse on the front of your bike. I love it. And it looks good as well, like I said, it looks great. Really nice design, I think. Oh, so that's your dip beam. That is dip beam with spots. And that's high beam. That's magnificent, look at that. And this is your flasher. All right. the neighbours kill me. Right, let's talk a little bit about the suspension, how it rides. Um, I've got mine set up on soft. Uh, I have it, uh, my mode is road, my suspension settings are soft. It's kind of like a, it's a sort of middle of the road kind of setting. It's like your, it's like your cold play of modes. <laughs> But it does the job for me, it's plenty enough power and um, the suspension does a really good job of, of soaking up the, uh, the bumps and the potholes that you get on London traffic, London roads and uh, the Telelever front suspension is, um, if you didn't know, it's, it, it's an odd thing if, if you hit your front brake hard and you're used to your the front end diving on your bike you don't get this on, on, on a telelever suspension it just stays completely upright and stable it's quite amazing yeah I, I don't know why other, other manufacturers haven't sort of adopted it onto their bikes um, maybe BMW have the, have the uh, patent for it I'm not too sure but it is a very effective system
and on the subject of rider modes and suspension settings I've always been in the mindset that should I ever have a bike that does all these things that has different rider modes I would just find one that suits me and just stick to that always well I could not have been more wrong <laughs> I love I love to fiddle about with the rider modes especially if the circumstances um, change in that you know I go to work and it's dry and I come home and it's raining I put the I put the rain mode on and it just it just eases up the throttle response and uh, you, you can really feel a difference and I'm, I'm always mucking about with it sometimes I put it in dynamic mode if I want to get a little bit fruity uh, but all in all I keep it in road mode uh, with uh, normal suspension but yeah it's a great thing to have it's it's a nice even if you don't use it it's a nice option to have it's nice to have it there and this particular bike has the um, the, the little plug-in device which enables you to go to enduro pro mode which is like the full-on kind of hardcore off-road mode which let's be honest here a lot of GS owners the most they go off-road is like perhaps a gravel path or something like that. They're not going to do any hardcore, you know, Parry Dakar type stuff. That's just the way it is. They're expensive bikes and if you drop it, you know, it's, it's going to cost you. In much the same way that, you know, uh, Land Rover or Range Rover owners rarely go off-road in, um, in, in their cars. It's, it's just the, the, the same sort of thing. But again, it's nice to know that should you have to go off-road, this thing can handle it. It's nice to have that. So in terms of riding through um, London traffic, filtering, commuting, riding, all that sort of stuff, the video that I put up before this one, um, I'll link that below as well, um, explains... Woo! <laughs> Woo! Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so the video before this one explains the filtering, why it's it, it's better at filtering than you think it would be, basically, due to the, the, the low slung engine. It enables the bike to kind of f kind of turn a lot quicker um, than the Explorer. So Yes, this bike can filter. Yes, it's a wide bike, but it can filter. It can filter really, really well. I have no problems with it whatsoever. I mean, yeah, I have like uh, moped riders blasting past me, but like I've said a million times before, I'm not the fastest rider in the world. So as long as I'm moving past the cars, then uh, I'm happy with that. So yeah, if you want to know how well this bike um, is that filtering and the sort of general commute duties check out the video i did before this that should answer any questions you have and one thing i've got to say when, when you're riding at speed so so around about 50 miles an hour like we are now it feels incredibly stable and incredibly planted and nothing seems to phase it. Side winds don't seem to phase it. Having a load of luggage on the back doesn't seem to phase it. I've got a picture here uh, when I picked up the bike and I rode down to Folkestone. I've got uh, all my camping gear plus a five man tent on top of that plus my lardy buttocks. And it didn't phase it at all. It didn't phase it. I did put it in the rider and luggage setting on the suspension and it just it's like it wasn't there, all that weight wasn't there, it's fantastic. Incredibly stable motorcycle. Yeah, this bike just seems to take it all in its stride, it's never really, it never gets flustered. It's a very kind of, feels very regal, if you know what I mean. It's got a lovely posture to it. All right, let's talk about wind protection, buffeting, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this screen is the stock screen that comes with the bike. 
and um, it's in its highest position. You adjust it with this uh, big wheel at the front here, so it goes down to that low. You probably can hear the difference there, and I usually just have it as high as it will go, unless it's really hot, then I'll bring it down. So, I can feel, when I bring my hand up, as soon as it touches the peak of the helmet, I can feel the wind on my hand. Anything below that, all this area here is just dead. There's no wind here at all. And then when I get to about my shoulders length, it's just, it's just hitting me on the edge of the shoulders. So my whole chest is um, protected from the wind and it's just the top of my helmet, which is, um, I think, the most wind protection I've ever had, to be honest. It is very, very peaceful behind here. Really, really nice. And like I say, if you want to, if you want to cool down a little bit, just bring it down. And then I can feel that in my chest, all over the helmet there. Yeah, it's lovely. Really nice. That is a very effective screen. Yes, it's a little bit wobbly, but it is really, really effective. The hand guards do a pretty decent job of uh, deflecting all the wind off. Uh, one thing I will note is the um, heated grips on the GS are unbelievable. <laughs> They're almost too hot. Um, and that's with the grip puppies on as well. They are excellent, excellent. Yes, yeah, so I'm in sixth gear now, tooting along, doing about 52, 53 miles an hour. Taking it easy, the bike's lovely and smooth. I'm at 3,000 revs. You could do this for hours and hours and hours. And not be in any discomfort at all. This is a very pleasurable place to be. Now in terms of riding for hours and hours, uh, a quick word about this tank. Um, it is, I believe, 32 litres. And I brimmed it the other day and I think it cost me about £42. Which is, you know, it, uh, the whole cost of petrol thing and everything else for that matter is, is another story altogether. But when I do brim it, up on here it says uh, range says about 405 miles now I'm, I'm, I'm under no illusion that it's actually going to do that I think it's going to be closer to about 350 so last time I filled up I actually set my trip meter uh, to zero so let's have a quick look at that now so last time I filled up so now I've done 326 miles and it's telling me Let's just double check. I've got 21 miles left to go. So you're looking, like I said, about 350 miles to a tank. And the sort of, sort of riding I do is, like you can see now, each journey, each way is 17 miles. So I'm doing a 36 mile journey every day. I would say about, I don't know, eight miles of that is this sort of road, a road, 50 miles an hour all the way. And the remainder, is stoppy starty uh, built up traffic kind of riding so hopefully that will give you some sort of indicator of the um, of the range you can get from the from a full tank and in terms of average miles per gallon what's it telling me uh, what's it telling me let's have a look no that's the wrong button Billy <laughs> um, it's telling me come on big power <laughs> yes well, I concentrate Billy okay so yes the um, average fuel range is telling me is 54 miles per gallon um, on the sort of riding that I do I'm not sure whether that's whether that's good or not, I don't, I don't really know. Oh, come on, Billy, come on. 
Woo! Yes! Oh my god, why are you going so slow? I can't have that. Oh, Grandpa Joe there. You know what? I ride this bike every day and I look forward to riding it every day, even though I'm doing the same journey. It doesn't matter. It's uh, much the same way I did with the Triumph. I just love riding every single day. It's a joy. It's a privilege. I feel privileged to be able to do this. Let's drop it down the gear, give it a bit of welly. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, God. One thing I will say about this dash, though, is I wish they that the, the space that they use for this analog um, speedo, I wish they just carried on the digital bit over, and did the and did the speed in on in like big numbers, like on the digital screen. Um, I don't know whether it's my eyes or not, but sometimes I have to do, do like a double glance just to see what speed I'm doing. But with the big digital numbers, you just glance down quick, and it's it's right there in front of you. But that's, that, that's kind of nitpicking. Obviously on the new bike with the TFT screens, it has that. Well, Billy, why didn't you buy the later model then? Okay, okay. Oh, easy there, Billy. Easy, easy. Now I have to be careful up here. I believe there is a squashed fox. There he is. Oh boy, old oh, flat Larry. <laughs> I tell you what, if you get there quick enough, you've got a nice meal. You've got a bit of meat for the week. Nice tight turning here, no problem for the big GS. Put on the power. Woo! Yes. All the kids are looking at me, thinking, who is that cool granddad? Oh no, what's happening here? Oh boy, am I supposed to get home? Okay, uh, can I go up this way? Again, brakes, very good. <laughs> Lovely big chunky Brembo's up front, back. Well, right, please let me be able to get home. Okay, okay, okay. Right, let's go off road, let's go hardcoring. Oh, yes. This is proper hardcore off-roading. Hey there, mate. Yeah, good. Whoa, look at that. Don't see that in the Parry Dakar. <laughs> right, I've got a likes and dislikes list. Let's have a look at that. Get out, fly. I'm trying to do a sh video here. <laughs> Blimey. All right, are we nice and straight? Okay, we look lovely. Let's get cracking. Okay, so if you've got this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. It's a long one, but I just wanted to put as much information as possible in here. Uh, if I haven't answered a question that you may have in regards to the GS, please ask me down below and I will try and answer it as best I can. If I can't, someone else who has a GS uh, might be, may be able to answer it for you. 
Again, if you want a bit more of a backstory as to why I've ended up with this motorcycle after test riding about four or five others, uh, how I came to make that decision based on my experiences on those bikes, that video will be down below as well. And also the filtering video, there's more footage of the filtering and a bit more information as well. Okay, we have our likes, we have our dislikes. Let's start on the likes, the tank range. 350, I reckon, now that's something I wanna ask, if there's any GS riders watching this and you have ridden past the point where the final bar on the gauge disappears, how many more miles left do you have in a tank? On the Explorer, if I remember correctly, it was about 20 miles, which if it's round about the same, in theory, this bike should do 370 to 380 miles. If anyone knows for sure what the maximum mileage on a GS is, please let me know down below. Um, but yes, yeah, so on average, about 350 miles, which is amazing. Handling, superb. For a bike of this size, again, the low slung engine, low center of gravity, turns in and out of traffic really well. Fueling is for the sort of riding I, I do when I get into heavy city traffic, lots of kind of just riding on the clutch kind of, but there's no lurching forward. You know, it's a lovely smooth buttery ride, uh, which kind of falls into the throttle response category. Uh, comfort. Now this bike is generally regarded as being one of the best long distance riding, uh, long distance bikes you can buy. Partly due to the fact that it's, it's got loads of protection up front, a nice, long, wide seat, although a little bit firm for my liking, but there's pretty much nothing that phases this bike. It's, it's so incredibly stable and planted on the road, like nothing I've ever ridden before. It's absolutely amazing. So comfort, superb. Carrying capacity, with the larger Touratech rack, again, I can carry a 120 litre bag on the back with room to spare. Um, I've taken off, if you didn't know, I've taken off the uh, luggage rack, not the luggage rack, the pannier racks. I don't like the look of them and I, it didn't come with any panniers so I took that all off. The rear passenger seat, seat plus the rack is more than enough space I need for pretty much any sort of circumstance. So carrying capacity is excellent. The looks, now obviously this is a very subjective thing. A lot of people hate this bike because of the looks, they hate it. But for me, it's one of the best looking adventure motorcycles you can buy. And it is an iconic bike, you can't deny that. The looks of it are iconic. And the whole beak thing at the front, I mean, how many manufacturers have, have copied that? You know, they're all trying to jump on the sort of adventure bike bandwagon and the GS is the original. I mean, let's face it, it really is. So um, the only other bike I think compares to it uh, in looks is the Desert Edition Triumph Explorer. That bike is just oh, beautiful. Okay, so looks, I love it. Headlight, uh, again, like you saw in the video, a massive, a massive spread of light, um, very confidence inspiring when, you, when you're riding, uh, riding at night. And I love the design of it. I love that kind of boss eyed kind of look that it has, really, really nice. Uh, and massively effective, above all else. All right. Oh. Okay, rider modes. Now, this is something I never thought I would be fiddling around with as much as I do. I love the fact that you can change the behavior of the bike in the rider modes. They really work well, and there's a significant difference between each one. And also, the suspension settings you can change within that as well. So the rider modes thing is superb and quite a revelation for me. I must admit, I'm always late to the party with these things, so this is the first bike I've ever had with rider modes on it. And uh, yeah, they're brilliant. They're just brilliant. Get out, fly. Oh my God. I have to shut that front door. <laughs> I've got to get rid of these flies. Getcha. There's a door open right there. Oh my God, it's so annoying. I think it's gone, I'm gonna close the door. Go on, Billy, close that door. Oh, he's still in here. 
Yes. Quick. I think what it is, they can see the, uh, they can see the light and they come in, they're attracted by it. All right, so um, where are we at? Okay, so last of the likes, ease of access to filter and plugs. Very easy to access the air filter on here. It's just a top cover on the tank. Take that off, four screws, uh, job done. And the plugs, either side of the cylinder heads, again, easy access. On the Explorer, you had to take off the tank to get to the air box and the cylinder heads. There's all fuel lines on it and everything. So you should be able to save a bit of time and therefore money by doing that job yourself. So I love that. So let's get on to the dislikes. What do I not like about this motorcycle? Lack of storage. By lack of storage, I mean lack of underseat storage. As I've mentioned before, on the Explorer, I could fit my air compressor, a full puncher repair kit, you know, the mushroom plugs, uh, the full tool kit, a multi-tool and a torch and all other bits and bobs with room to spare. With this, there is, yeah, you can fit the BMW tool kit, which fits underneath the seat, but there's like four tools in it and that's it which is why, like I mentioned in the video, which is why I've got the bag under the rack and the bag on the bar there. That's the reason why I have those bags, because the lack of underseat storage. All right, flappy windscreen. Now I'm kind of used to this windscreen flappy business now. Uh, not that it bothered me much at first, but I, you, you would think with a bike that's built to go long distance at speed, you would think they'd do a windscreen that didn't flap about, but I don't know, but I'm kind of used to it now. So it's not, it's not really a biggie. The tire valves, not at 90 degrees. This is a real pain in the backside, especially because this bike has got spoked wheels. You can't, you can't put a um, pressure gauge on it to check the pressure gauge. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to get 90 degree valves put on there, which isn't a massive expense uh, or a big job for that matter. So I should be able to do that myself. All right, the scroll wheel placement, that weird kind of wheel that they have on the, by the switch gear on the bars there. Apparently, I think someone did say you can use that to navigate your actual menu on the dash. I don't know how you do that. If you do know, let me know down below. But a lot of people use it to navigate their GPS system on the bike. I don't have a GPS on this bike, not, not one that can be used with that scroll wheel at least. Um, so it just seems an odd place. It just seems like a in front of the indicator, which you use a lot more. It just seems like an odd place to put it, but okay. BMW know better than I do. All right, the last of the dislikes. Tire pressure is displayed in bar. Now, why don't they not use PSI? If PSI is displayed on the tires, why would they display bar on the menu? Apparently the only way you can remedy this is by taking the bike to a dealership, they hook it up to their PC and they can change it uh, via the software. As far as I'm aware, and according to the forums, there is not a way to do this on the bike. It stays in bar, whether you like it or not, unless you take it to a dealership. All right, there you go, guys. That is the likes and dislikes done. I love this motorcycle. I'm very, very glad I came to the decision to get this over all the others. Um, will I have it as long as the Explorer, which I had for a decade? We will see, hopefully, um, because I can't afford to get any more bikes <laughs> at the moment. So yeah, it's a really superb motorcycle. Hopefully that's covered everything you need to know about it. Uh, I'm enjoying it immensely. Um, I guess one more dislike you could add would be the, the perception of BMW riders by other motorcycle riders who don't ride BMWs. And I think the GS is probably at the top of this category in that motorcycle riders think that GS riders are kind of fuddy-duddy uh, wannabe policemen or something weird like that. Let me tell you something, I am none of those things. <laughs> I don't care what you ride. Please ride whatever you like. Like I've said a million times before, it doesn't matter what you ride. If it puts a smile on your face, that motorcycle is the best motorcycle in the world. It really doesn't matter. So, and I think the problem is it's the riders that wear the polite notice vests. You know the sort of people I'm talking about. 
guys, listen, don't wear a polite notice vest. It's really, don't, <laughs> please don't do it. It's tragic, it is tragic. All right, that's it. So thank you very much for watching. It's been a long one, I know, but hopefully we've covered everything. Let's look forward to the next 10 years. Who knows, we will see. Take it easy, guys. See you later on. Bye-bye.